How are you, Simon? Very well, thank you. Hope you are too. I am. Uh, I got over the your weather. jet lag. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, I'm not feeling it. It took us a while to get here because obviously Iceland is uh, the very north of the Atlantic Ocean, so it's not not near from home, let's say. But uh, we've been enjoying the not day so uh, much, and we've been keeping you moving. Absolutely, yeah. No time to sleep. <laughs> you can sleep later. You can always sleep later, right? Exactly. Especially here in Iceland, where we are today. Uh, we only get like four and a half hours of uh, sunlight, so we have to take advantage of that. Yeah, 10 a.m. till about 4. I think your door is still open. Oops. So Simon, a new vehicle for a Land Rover, uh, the Discovery, which is not a new name plate because it was already in the market before, and it's so still in other uh, markets outside the U.S., but this particular model, completely new. Yes, uh, absolutely. The uh, Discovery Sport represents the first model in the new Discovery Pillar in our lineup, so everybody recognizes Range Rover. We're moving in to renew our Discovery and reintroduce Discovery to the US. And then, of course, there's the Defender models, which uh, will come eventually, but they're further on down the road. So, again, Discovery Sport's the first model in the Discovery lineup for. Uh, Jaguar Land Rover in the, in the US. So uh, this vehicle, we've been driven it today here in uh, Iceland from Reykjavik to here, two and a half hours more or less, about 250 kilometers, 160 miles, something like that. Uh, obviously it can go through anything. <laughs> we already drove through regular snow, regular streets, rain, uh, dirt like right now, ice, water, everything. I mean, so it's a typical performance by a Land Rover, right? Yeah, absolutely. So everybody expects uh, Land Rover to have the capability. This car's no exception. It can really conquer any terrain within reason. And Iceland's just a fantastic uh, uh, venue to showcase, uh, you know, how the vehicle performs. So let's talk a little bit about the specs. I mean, what kind of engine? What what are the, the specifications of this car? So this car has um, a two-liter turbo four-cylinder engine with a nine-speed ZF gearbox. Powerful little engine, 240 horsepower, lots of lots of torque, um, and as you probably hopefully seen today, the car can move when you need it to. So, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's fun to drive. It's really composed and dynamic on the road, and it has additional versatility. Can carry up to seven passengers. Um, so a really really good competitive all-round package. Entering a fairly competitive segment in the U.S. The compact, yeah, uh, premium segment. And uh, I was kind of surprised when I heard pricing. I mean, I think that if, if all the characteristics that you already mentioned are make it competitive, the pricing is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think uh, we uh, obviously focused on uh, improving the um, penetration of this product in the market. So we have to be competitively priced and we have to offer a really compelling uh, proposition for consumers who obviously have a lot of choice. There's a lot of other great vehicles out there in the marketplace. So we need to be aggressively positioned both with a competitive package but also with really really yeah. competitive pricing so what is it like a 38,000 I understand for the base model yeah just a hair under 38,000 uh, MSRP uh, delivery and destination charge on top of that and the vehicle will go up to the low 50s depending on which model and which options you you get so that fits in the, in the home lineup of Land Rover this is the entry level then you have the bulk um, well, yes, uh, we have Range Rover. Um, obviously, Range Evoque is a, a model within the Range Rover lineup. Yeah. This vehicle is really the uh, first of a new range of um, contemporary Land Rover products that will be introduced into the market. So, although it has similarities in some of the design and design language that you see, um, it has similarities to other Land Rover and Range Rover products. It's very distinctly different. And it's entering a, a, a segment which, we'll, which we're not currently represented in. So, um, yes. Uh, in the Discovery family that you were mentioning, uh, this is the first one, but there's it's com it's coming. Uh, the LR4 is going to be replaced by that. What the rest of the world knows is the Discovery. Right? Yes, exactly. And, and we will um, introduce Discovery into the US again as a, a replacement for the LR4, but it will be a new completely new, more contemporary design than the outgoing car. And again, we'll follow suit the rest of the road world, we'll call, uh, call a, a new model a Discovery, and that will fit in line with this model, which is obviously called the Discovery Sports, so we'll have more of a family. Uh, a range, yeah, different range, yeah. Yes. 
that that's gonna increase obviously your uh, lineup model and your presence in the market but uh, you you have been doing really great lately huh? uh, 2014 was a great year for Land Rover 2014 really really good year yes uh, in fact all of our products have been selling very well um, Range Rover and Range Rover Sport continue to do very well um, and you know days to to turn uh, those products are market leading uh, we would like a little bit more supply we're working hard <laughs> to get it to satisfy yeah. those consumers that are in line but uh, even LR4 is sell, selling really well so every time we refresh um, we try to do the right things to keep the product uh, relevant to the consumers who are looking for it we try to make it better more luxurious and that uh, that strategy seems to resonate really well with uh, the US consumer that's the only uh, thing that I uh, feel kind of guilty with the uh when I drive uh, one, of, one of your programs, one of your vehicles, and they are so luxurious, but also so capable. You can throw them to water, to mud, and then I don't like getting them dirty. Yeah. I, mean, it's, I feel bad about it. I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. We all know what the products can do because we experience yeah. it. And, you know, one of the big draws for a consumer is knowing they're buying into the confidence that the vehicle yeah. inspires in them. And uh, people want to know that if they do get into a sticky situation now, and, you know, conditions that might require it, and this one in particular, compared to all the others, I mean, um, this is really big. I mean, this is in the compact uh, cross the SUV uh, segment, but like as you said, seven up to seven people uh, capacity and like a lot of space, especially with this sunroof, which I love, which make it like feel even bigger. Yeah, the panoramic roof just yeah. brings air into into the light into the inside of the car. But you know, we've done some really clever packaging with this vehicle. We've used a relatively small platform, but by uh, designing the rear suspension in a very unique way we've been able to eliminate some of the space intrusion that rear suspension and struts yeah. normally take up and by doing that we've been able to package a very very relevant third row in this vehicle which you know is a first in the segment there's nobody else offering plus two seating in this size of car so yeah. on the outside it doesn't look possible but when you get on the inside you'll see you can ac not only access the third row relatively easily you can be comfortable but you can also optimize the space between the second and third yeah. row by sliding the second row forward if needs be so the third road is an option or it's come standard with every vehicle it, it is an option okay yes so um and the, in this vehicle uh, besides the new design i mean everything is new in this one in particular but like the new technology the info infotainment system is also new yeah the the infotainment is new it's uh, just been introduced on on this product it will find its way onto other jaguar land rover products but it offers uh, you know a pretty competitive sound system navigation all the things that consumers uh, usually expect so um, in a in a very intuitive easy to use uh, interf with a very um, inter intuitive interface you mentioned this is coming up to the market uh, when it's gonna be on sale this, this april may time frame uh, so as stock bills uh, will introduce and be on sale sometime in that time frame. Okay, and what's the schedule for the LR4 replacement? Do you have, have you announced that? Do you have a, already a date? Uh, we haven't announced that yet. That'll be a future, uh, a future announcement, but uh, obviously the concepts have been introduced Don't on yeah. the global we've, we've stage. Everybody yeah. knows what's coming. Yeah. So we'll make those announcements as the time is right. Yeah, and speaking of announcements, uh, we just in Detroit in the Auto Show a couple of weeks ago, you announced that you're bringing in a, the diesel technology that is like so popular in Europe and other countries. So it's finally coming to the US. Yes, our loyal consumers have been, been waiting a long time yeah. for us to bring diesel. So I think uh, that will be uh, another very popular extension of Range Rover and Range Rover Sport. And really that will be the start of the proliferation of diesel engines on a widespread basis across all of our Jaguar and Land Rover products. Excellent. Well, uh, if uh, 2014 was a great year with the introduction of this car and what it's coming, it seems that you're going to be having a couple, at least more than that, I'm sure. Uh, very good years. Huh? The, the new product pipeline is full and we'll be continuing to roll out products uh, on an ongoing basis at yeah. a fairly aggressive level. And you are growing, uh, you're manufacturing, uh, you're manufacturing uh, Capacity is growing also not outside England too, right? I mean, you're, there's plans at least uh, for plants in Brazil. You're already building in China. Yes, we have uh, plans for Brazil. We have actually opened a facility in China now. 
and we have plans for India also. And there'll be other developments on that front as time goes forward, um, when when the time is right. Okay, well, Simon, thank you very much. We're gonna keep enjoying uh, driving in Iceland while we still have light. Uh, we still have a couple hours of that. So um, thank you very much for your time and information, and um, congratulations again. A beautiful vehicle and a lot of success for Land Rover. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.